some noise, but not enough. Oh, are, are you, you kidding me? Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to another episode of CSK News. And our first big story today, thank you to Richard Lewis, who has actually been covering this for quite some time. We have several updates for all of you as of right now for case opening websites, as well as CSGO betting websites out there that have gone down for the time being. Of course, in the thumbnail, you guys have seen over $500,000 in skins have been banned only by one website and their bots. Unfortunately enough for CS Esport on screen, one of those CSGO betting websites out there, not gambling related whatsoever. And they actually lost over 150 bots just the other day to Valve banning those bots. We have no idea whether they can get those bots back. Over 150 bots with nearly 100,000 items on them combined. What's really cool, I'll link it down below for all of you if you guys want to check this out. Unfortunately enough for the website, which seems legit for the time being, you guys can actually go to the link down below and check out each and every bot that's been banned for the time being. And you can see all the individual items, each of which, you know, each bot having anywhere from 700 to 1,200 items. So that means uh, easily over 100,000 items uh, just from this eSport website, this CS eSport website have been banned together and on top of that of course the over 150 steam bots steam bots going for hefty prices for gambling websites out there and betting websites which can be paid for anywhere from a thousand to three thousand dollars a piece so well over five hundred thousand dollars in skins at least we're estimating around that plus on top of that the amount of price and our money they actually had to pay for these bots right now I do feel bad but it's actually one of those steps closer to valve really cracking down on websites because of course we actually had Richard Lewis yesterday post this video about an update on the case opening websites he'd actually called out previously he had been in contact with a guy who had worked for a case opening site and had said how you know many case opening sites out there have a mode where they can actually pretty much prevent you guys from winning items and of course we've all known for the longest time that most case opening websites or gambling websites in general you're not going to make money on it just it's the gist of things it's how business works so it's really nothing that's you know out of the norm we, re we really expected that but it's kind of cool to see more insight so I'll link Richard Lewis's video down below but even further steps Valve has taken not only against betting websites because I consider CS eSport to be a website kind of like CSGO Lounge slowly but surely being taken down. I wish it was more gambling sites though, but we have had progress there as well. We've had several uh, you know, cases like, we actually have websites like Loot Case and Loot Market have gone down thankfully to Richard Lewis there. And apart from that, we've also had several main Steam groups be taken down. So although Valve can't take action against gambling sites in a in a dramatic fashion, at least not fast enough the, the amount they're growing is, is far out doing what Valve can actually take down. But Steam is actually taking down several of these groups. We've had Hell Case, Drake Moon on top of that skin hub all of their steam groups are currently down so a right move guys and a, and a move in the right direction so far when it comes to gambling and betting but I do feel bad for CS eSport not a paid advertisement whatsoever guys but they probably lost well over or close to five hundred thousand dollars in skins just in the past day or so so progress so far for Valve in the attack against gambling and betting. On top of that, very briefly, I do want to touch on Freiburg and where he's going to go. Updates for all of you. We have now at Freiburg, well, I guess we had the alleged theory that I had previously that Freiburg could go to Godsent. That move would have to be made before, of course, two days from now. So very unlikely as of right now, whether Godsent would go to the major or not would affect that actual choice. So I still personally think that Freiburg has Godsent as an option on his radar, but now it seems he could be also going to Team North, who is seeking interest in him as well. If you guys remember before, actually, we had the ESL Pro League finals where North was in the finals there. Before that weekend, it was North who wanted to get rid of AZ. It was actually rumored that AZ would be the member they would choose to get rid of if they were to have a roster transfer. Then shortly afterwards, they placed second at ESL Pro League finals to G2. And unfortunately enough, we had no more rumors after that. So it seems Freiburg could go to North as well. On top of that though, he's also come out and said uh, Ents Esports was an option. Then Ents released their CSGO roster. So that option was off the table. And finally, Freiburg has also gone out with HLTV. And he has said that North America is also an option. So right now, there is a lot on the plate, a lot on the radar for Freiburg going forward. So for all of you individual Freiburg fans out there, I can say there's probably three options right now, and I'll rank them in my own personal order, which of course is biased by my opinion. I still think Godson is his number one option, followed by North, and then finally the third option, which I think is kind of unlikely, North America, if they offer him enough money, any organization in the North American scene. Now speaking of the North American scene, we lost a great coach just yesterday, or actually just this morning, as Misfits did tweet out this. They confirmed that Peacemaker is no longer under their organization as a strategic coach and analyst, and he has now moved on fully to Tai Lu, the Chinese team. This is actually not our first North American coach that has gone out to the Chinese scene. We've had several North American pros actually go out to teams like BOOT and other Chinese organizations out there. So it's gonna be cool to see how he does. Peacemaker has joined Tai Lu, although it will not be for the major qualifier, which starts tomorrow. I'm very excited for that, as uh, PGL came out with this statement as well. 
the fact that Ty Lue did register for that tournament or qualify for that tournament without a coach being registered on their lineup, that means Peacemaker cannot actually be their coach for this individual major qualifier. Now, if they go on to the major, that's a different story, but he will still be their coach as well as for other events. I think it's going to be ESL Cologne as well. So congrats to Peacemaker. He will be a part of that Ty Lue roster going forward. Although for PGL major qualifier tomorrow, he can only talk to the players in between games. He can't actually be in the booth or right next to the players during the games, only after and before. And speaking of the major qualifier, that will start tomorrow. Like I said previously, guys, I am so hyped up for that. Here are round one, day one matches for all of you, and that will be going on for the next few days. We're going to find out what our final eight teams are, who our final eight teams are going to be for that major. So it's going to be cool to see. And again, the 16 teams competing will be those on screen for all of you, as well as we have Pronax. Pronax actually missed his flight for the major qualifier, but do not worry, all you fans of Pronax out there. He actually made his flight back, or the uh, secondary flight, and he will be making it on time for the PGL major qualifier going on all day tomorrow and several days as well into this weekend. So it's going to be cool to see what eight teams do manage to qualify and many people are thinking out there that Cloud9, Optic, North American teams are going to be screwed over here. What do you guys think? Leave a comment down below. What eight teams? Give me an order guys. Give me eight teams you guys think are going to qualify for a major and join our legendary teams. I am so excited to see who does go through and that's going to be happening all day tomorrow. So that's what I'll be doing as well. Now quick updates as well for all of you guys. I'll be very busy this weekend and next week so I'm going to try and make um, videos ahead of time or some sort of videos. If you guys have any ideas what videos you guys want to see, please also leave a comment down below for that. And wrapping up today's episode of CSK News. We have some HLTV reports coming out this morning, so thank you to them. I'll link the article down below for all of you where Tricked Esports have decided are, are going to acquire a new Danish team, most likely in Team Singularity, their roster on screen right now. So Tricked Esports obviously already came out and said they were not going to re-sign their current roster, so this seems very likely they will be signing the new Danish team, Team Singularity. So going forward, it seems very unlikely that Kadian will be a part of this transfer. Kadian was one of those original prospects people thought that Tricked Esports would sign, but he's actually currently playing with the X tricked esports roster, so maybe still heroic in his future. Maybe an X tricked esports, uh, you know, organization will sign that roster instead. But the future of Kadian is undecided, as Trick Esports is very likely to acquire the Singularity roster. Now, going off of that, thank you to all of you guys who use my OP Skins affiliate code. The OP Skins army continues to grow. We are now 457 members strong. Thank you all so much for that rapid growth. You guys are all amazing. Seriously, I cannot thank you enough about that. Now, also, big thanks to all of you guys who reported this fake Steam account on screen right now for all of you. That is a fake Stannis Law. Uh, I guess he's faking to be the, the liquid Stannis Law many of you guys know about. And why he's getting away with this and why he's been doing so well about it is because his Steam community ID is still Stannis Law CS. It's a fake account. I'll link it down below for all of you. Please do me a favor, guys. If anything, please go and report this profile. He's been known to actually ask many kids out there, manipulated teenagers, to giving him skins because he pretends to be Stannis Law and says, I need skins for this event. Can I borrow some skins? And it's very manipulative because not only does he have 260 pages of comments on his profile, but he also has several real pros on his friends list as well as several fake pros, but it's very likely if you go to this page and you go to his friends list, you're going to believe it's a real Stannis Law. It is not. Do me a favor and report that account down below. For a short amount of time yesterday, he did private his account, so let's try and actually, he, he re-unprivated his account, so let's go and try and report him and get him off, get this piece of trash off the internet. Now on top of that, we actually I want to ask you guys a question. Would you want a beautiful player to come back to CSGO? You probably said yes. Let me show you a beautiful player on screen right now for all of you. Why would you not want this guy to come back? That is ex-Renegades Havoc, obviously a former Renegades player back in uh, February of 2016 when he left. And he now wants to make a possible return to CSGO as he tweeted out this just late last night as well. So, will Havoc return? We actually have no idea. Hopefully sometime soon he does make his return. A lot of fans out there of Havoc, especially, you know, Renegades doing quite well. I don't think he'd actually return to Renegades, dependent upon maybe if they do well on the major qualifier, which does start tomorrow, and they have a pretty good, you know, matchup for map one, that is. So we'll see how Renegades does, we'll see if Havoc does return, and bouncing off our last story, guys, we're going to go to the Argentinian team known as Miami Flamingos. They are currently a pretty good team, they're in 10th place right now in the ESCA Season 25 premiere. I say 10th place, but there's a lot of teams in that, and they're still 4-2 and two right now, and they're doing quite well. They actually have their newest member, that will be Marky on screen for all of you. Unfortunately enough, though, for some sad news, he'll be replacing currently their, their, their former player, Proxy because his visa has now been denied twice for the team. So it's so sad to see pro players out there still having visa issues, but Marky actually stood in for the team quite some time ago, and he's been playing for them ever since he left about a month ago. Ever since he left Energy, he's had a spot in this roster. He now joins the roster officially, so best of luck to Miami Fling Flamingos going forward. Now on top of that, that's the end of the episode. Hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode of CSGO News. If you guys did, please leave a like. More importantly, leave a comment down below so I can reply to you guys and talk it up with you. I will see you guys all next time. Remember, I, like you, I will see you all tomorrow. Live, love, laugh a lot. Goodbye.